Hey, welcome to this channel. My name is Akin Wale. I want to share today on conducting management systems uh, audit closing meeting. All right. So if there is a closing meeting, that means there is an opening meeting, right? Uh, in the previous video I've shared or oh, ISO 1011's requirements on guidance rather on uh, how to conduct an opening meeting. You can check my channel for that particular video. And if you have not subscribed to this channel, kindly try to do so, uh, so that you can get more educational videos from me. Okay, so management system, basically, um, well, we have so many of them uh, since uh, the establishment of the National Organization for Standardization. They have uh, published more than 24,000 standards to date. Is that not interesting? That's very massive. All right, so there's a standard for virtually every um, every uh, uh, life endeavor or career endeavor or sectoral or uh, industrial endeavor you could, could think of. And of course, they're also working with um, the National Electrotechnical Commission, IEC, okay, in developing uh, many of these standards. Okay, so... Uh, as a lead auditor, this one is for you. Uh, either you are pragmatically leading or you're a member of uh, uh, of audit teams uh, that is uh, that are auditing uh, management systems. Okay, so this one is for you or you are writing the lead uh, audit uh, certification. Okay, so I have um, you guys in mind as I prepared uh, this particular uh, video on how to conduct a closing meeting. So uh, you, you don't rush to the closing meeting. The standard says you need to prepare for closing meeting. And by standard, I mean ISO 1011, which is the guidance for management system auditors. So the audit team should confer prior to the closing meeting in order to uh, review the audit findings and any other appropriate information collected during the audit against the audit objectives. All right. So you don't want to talk. Uh, you don't want to uh, to talk out of scope. All right. In audit evidence, we say audit evidence needs to have quality and need to have quantity. Quantity means that the audit evidence must be sufficient. All right. Quality means that the audit evidence must be relevant and must be reliable. So you don't want to embarrass yourself uh, during the closing meeting, all right, when you are now raising irrelevant, all right, uh, evidence, okay? So uh, you need to do your review, or I will call it quality review. So you have to do quality review of the audit findings, all right, before the closing meeting. Uh, you have to agree on the audit conclusions, taking into account the uncertainty inherent in the audit process, all right? So there's no perfect audit, all right? What we have is reasonable assurance and not absolute assurance. And so we need to be able to look at the uh, unique characteristics, unique peculiarities, unique happening situation context of a particular audit uh, and review the conclusions again to be sure that uh, our conclusions are valid. Okay, prepare recommendations is specified by the audit plan. Of course, most audit, uh, audit uh, reports will, will round up with recommendations, all right, uh, based on what the findings are. Then discuss audit follow-up as applicable. So audit follow-up is also very interesting. At the end of the audit, you have to give uh, the audit team uh, the, the, or the audit clients like a grace period. Okay, to be able to implement the recommendations. Okay, of course, the timeline could also be agreed and discussed during the closing meeting. All right, so all these need to be done uh, prior to <laughs> going for the closing meeting so that we don't have any confusion. So conducting closing meeting per se. So a closing meeting should be able to present the audit findings and conclusions. So we are through, this is what we have, we have discovered in the course of the audits. Don't forget our audit, audit principle, fear presentation, all right? Also very relevant here. 
Uh, the closing meeting should be chaired by the audit team leader, just as the audit team leader chaired the opening meeting, and attended by the management of the audit team and include as applicable those responsible for the functions or processes which have been audited. So the team lead of the departments of functions you audited, are, for example, in 27,001, you will have audited HR when you are auditing people controls. In Annex A, you will have audited uh, IT and information security when you are auditing technology control. You will have audited internal audit for clause 9.2. You will have audited management for clause 9.3 or clause 5. You will have audited the strategy department for clause 5. So all these departments and functions, you will have audited the risk management department in clause 6 and clause 8. So we need to be able to have the team leads of these functions represented. So the uh, audit clients, the representative of the, of the management of the client, all the clients will be there. Other members of the audit team will be there. Other relevant interested parties as determined by the audit client and or audit team. So uh, other relevant uh, interested parties, for example, from what I've seen in my experience, the consultants that work with the audit or the audit team to implement that standard is they are always present in the closing meeting, all right, for obvious reasons. So they also need to be there to see how well they've done and they also be able to get feedback from the auditors on what needs to be corrected. Okay, so the uh, consultants are, are always there. Okay, uh, if applicable, the audit team leader should advise the auditee of situations encountered during the audit that may decrease the confidence that can be placed in the audit uh, conclusions. So audit is not perfect. There's no perfect audit, as, as I've said. So audit is based on uh, on uh, on sampling, all right? And uh, we, we have what we call sampling risk. So the the less the number of, the less the sample size, all right, the more the sampling risk. The risk that the, the sample is not representative of the population. And that can lead to detection risk and ultimately the audit risk. So there is a possibility that that um, uh, omissions could have been made, all right? Maybe because of sampling challenges, maybe because of intimidation, all right? We have intimidation as one of the threats to independence, all right? Uh, non cooperation from the ODT. Maybe perhaps there's a particular information you're asking for and they are refusing to give you for one reason or the other. All these things, you have to discuss it at the closing meeting so that they will know the challenges that you face. All right, uh, if defined in the management system or by agreement with the client, the participants should agree on the time frame for an action plan to address all the findings. So like I've said earlier, it, it's not, uh, even though it's encouraged that recommendations be implemented as, as fast as possible, but this may not always be the case for one reason or the other. So the audit team may be allowed to draw up an action plan uh, that will address the root cause, all right? Uh, note that the action plan must be approved by the auditor, all right? So the auditor must be satisfied that the action plan is actually actionable, all right? That is going to work. So uh, the action plan must identify the non-conformity, must identify the root cause of the non-conformity, must give a timeline. All right, the timeline. I must also give the uh, conditions, all right, KPIs, or that will show that indeed the no conformity has been addressed. So uh, this time frame may be agreed also, all right, during the closing meeting. As appropriate, the following should be explained to the auditor in the closing meeting, all right, uh, advising that the audit evidence collected was based on the sample of the information available and it's not necessarily fully representative of the overall effectiveness of the auditor's processes. Like I've said, uh, we the audit is, is the audit is, is always uh, based on sampling and so there is uh, sampling risk. So the auditor should uh, let the auditor be aware of that, that if another auditor can conduct this audit, that does not mean that new non-conformities May, uh, will not be discovered. All right, uh, the method of reporting should also be explained. How the audit findings should be addressed based on the agreed process. So like we said, there are various non-conformity that the audit might throw up. We have major non-conformity, which basically means that uh, 
the the clause, the require clause was not, uh, the requirement was not met at all, all right? Or what the audit did, did not address the, the fundamental, did not fundamentally address the requirement of the standard, all right? So that's major non-conformity, which means the management system is seriously adversely affected. Okay, then we have minor non-conformity, which is like a scratch, all right? A scratch on the surface. So yes, we have a non-conformity, but it's not a big deal. All right, all right, but we should still be concerned. All right, so there's a partial fulfillment, partial fulfillment of the requirement, all right, but not, not in total. That's a minor non-conformity. We have an observation. Observation is not a non-conformity, but the auditor is saying, look, you have to watch this. With given time or certain conditions, this might evolve into a non-conformity. And so please watch it. That's, that's observation. We also have opportunity for improvement. We had the auditor say, you're good, but you could be better, all right? You are doing an audit of the, of the management system once a year. The standard says you should do an audit of the management system at plant intervals. So it didn't say once, twice, twice, four, uh, four times a year, all right? So you can't really flag it as a non-conformity if a client is doing a uh, uh, internal audit of the management system once a year, all right? The standards is at planning time, so which means they are okay, all right? But but really, can it be better? We all know that, yes, they can be better. So you, 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 can, you, can, you can motivate them. Why don't you increase it to twice, all right? The management review or internal audit should be done, all right? Maybe thrice a year or, or, even, or, or even once a quarter. So once a quarter is the ideal, all right? But if they are doing something less, you can call it non-conformity, but you can recommend, all right, for opportunity for improvement. Or maybe the 9.1, the monitoring, uh, measurement, and analysis, and evaluation, maybe they were doing it manually. The KPIs, they were tracking, they were tracking it manually. So you might encourage them, well, why don't you automate? Why don't you automate? So that's an opportunity for, for improvement, all right? So configuration management in our 20,000, all right, could be done manually. All right, but we all know it's better if it's be automated. So all these are OFI. So these are these are four uh, areas of uh, concern that the auditor might raise in the audit. And so you also want to uh, encourage them that they need to respond based on the severity of the uh, findings of the audit of the auditor. All right, but you also want to let them know possible consequences of not adequately addressing the audit findings. So that is the educational aspect, all right? And so they, they need to know that you are not raising this non-conformity just for fun of it, all right? So they need to know, all right, the implication for the management system if the audit findings were not adequately addressed. Then the presentation of the audit findings and conclusions in such a manner that they are understood and acknowledged by the auditor's management. So that is very, very important. So the, the closing meeting is actually like a, it's where you sell, not tell. Remember, for those of us that are management students, so we know the difference between telling and selling. So at, at the close out meeting, the closing meeting, we are not telling the auditor this is what you should do. We are selling it to them so that they know what is wrong, what is wrong with what, what they have implemented, with the management system they have implemented. And, and we have to tell them you know, why it is wrong. All right, based on what the standard says, all right, so that they, they fully get it. So we have an agreement on the findings, all right. Then uh, any related post audit activities, uh, such as the implementation and review of corrective actions, addressing audit complaints, happy process, and so on. So all these also will be raised during the closing meeting. Any diverging opinion, which is possible regarding the audit findings or conclusions. Between the audit team and the audit team should be discussed and, if possible, resolved. So most of the time, the question, okay, is a major non-conformity, is not a major non-conformity. So in many audits, you see that argument coming up. All right, it's minor, it's not minor, it's major, it's not minor, it's not major. All right, so oh, that could be uh, the case, but they should be resolved. So if they are not resolved, uh, we should record it. The auditors should record it. Uh, that the uh, that particular issue was not resolved. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, 
Uh, I'm running up this particular session now on uh, audit uh, management system audit closing meeting. If you have any question or any comment, you can just drop your question or comment uh, on the uh, on the comment uh, session, and I will definitely respond to them. So thank you so much. Till uh, I drop another video. Goodbye.